every single thing we do. And there is a mysterious gift God is giving us at all times. But before we start, let me share with you the words of Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And the question for me and for you this morning, do you have light in you? If you have this light, you are rushing and running towards the law and the testimony, which is the word of God. And what I would like to share with you today, the more deeper meaning of having the word of God in our life. What I'm going to share is just a few quotes by some of the church fathers. In the very famous book by Father by Oliver Clement, The Root of Christian Mysticism, he's saying this. He's trying to embrace the meaning of mysticism for every single teaching in the church. So under this title, Scripture as an Aspect of Incarnation, he was saying, already in Scripture there is an aspect of incarnation. How? Scriptures embodies the word, and the incarnation of the word completes the transformation into Eucharist of the hearing or reading the word, or reading of the word. It is the Eucharist of the mind. When we say, and we said many times before, that we need to attend the readings, it's not because we need to come early to the church, because we need to have the Eucharist of the mind. We need to focus on each word we hear, and even when we read the scriptures at home, we are nourishing our minds with the word of God. We, it means we are eating the life through the word which is written. So what I would like to share more today, how that the scripture could be a part of my life, a source for a, a real life for each and every believer in the church. Origen was quoting nearly the same words. He was saying in his, in his homily on the book of Numbers, chapter 16, about the Eucharist of the mind. We are said to drink the blood of Christ, not only when we receive it according to the rite of the mysteries, not only in the liturgy, but also when we receive his words in which life dwells. As he said himself, the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life as if he is telling you and encouraging you, whenever you are opening the scriptures, whenever you are eating the scriptures, you are uniting yourself with the life who is Christ himself. Definitely it's not the same level of the Eucharist, but it's a beginning of a Eucharist, an aspect of a Eucharist or incarnation, as Oliver Clement was saying a few minutes ago. And he's adding again origin in his comment in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, 13, in truth, before Jesus, scripture was like water. But since Jesus, it has become for us the wine into which Jesus changed the water. So again, you could read the scripture without the glasses of Jesus, without seeing that Jesus is the core belief or the person that the whole scripture about him, it looks like water for you. But once you see Christ in it, it you are sharing with him and converting this water into the wine. Again, Origen is adding how the word is always a revelation. There's a mystery in reading and repeating the reading of the word. Again, in his commentary on the Gospel of John, he's saying, no one has dared to give so pure revelation of the divinity of the Lord as John. Why the Gospel of St. John is very famous that he is showing more the divinity of Christ. We must make bold to say that Gospels are the fulfillment of the whole Bible. And John's Gospel is the fulfillment of the Gospels. And again, why? He's trying to find out the reason why this Gospel is the fulfillment of the whole Gospels. No one can grasp this meaning unless he has rested on Christ's breast. Unless he has received Mary from Jesus so that she has become his mother too. He's emphasizing on the personal relationship. Are you spending time before God? Are you resting your head on his breast as St. John was doing it? If yes, you are going to grasp these revelations. Otherwise, it's just plain words. Are you accepting Virgin Mary to be your mother? Are you accepting the church to be your mother? Then you can see everything on a way of a revelation. Again, he's telling us, 
with a secret in every word. And it's your decision that this secret is revealed to you or not. In his commentary on Proverbs, again, Origen was saying, if you try to reduce the divine meaning to the purely external signification of the words, the word will have no reason to come down to you. There's a descent of the word. There's a descent and revelation of the Holy Spirit to reveal the secret. It will return to its secret dwelling. You will never get anything out of it, which is contemplation that is worthy of it. For it has wings, this divine meaning given to it by the Holy Spirit, who is its guide. Again, when you read, when you open your Bible at home, even when you hear the scriptures at your, in your car or at home, you are seeking the Holy Spirit himself. You are seeking to see a secret to be revealed to you personally. Otherwise, you said, I read and I understand nothing. Then the word is going back to the secret dwelling again. Origin is adding, it's a fire of the Lord. He's saying, when, we, when a saying of the Lord kindles the imagination of a hearer of the word. And he's telling us, don't go home without this fire. When you hear the word, there is a verse for you to kindle this fire in you. And makes him captivated of the wisdom that rust into flames at the sight of any beauty. Then the fire of the Lord is come down upon him. I, he was trying to say, whenever you open the Bible, the fire is coming down. The fire of the Lord coming down on you to rekindle your life. When you receive the Holy Spirit on day one, you are baptized, we receive the fire. But we needed to rekindle it always through the word. And then St. John Cassian was telling us there is a mystery. There is a key to receive this revelation. There is a key to receive this blessing. If you wish to attain to true knowledge of the scriptures, hasten to acquire first an unshakable humility of heart. Why you don't understand? Because you are going to examine the word. If you humble yourself and you accept the word to examine you, with unshakable humility of heart. That alone will lead you not to the true knowledge that puffs up, but to that which enlightens by the perfection of love. This again our calling, to seek this humility. Many are proclaiming nowadays, especially in Egypt, that I became an atheist. It's in a very way, a very simple way, I became or I obtained or rejected the humility of Christ. I rejected to receive the secrets of the revelation, and I put my mind above the knowledge of God. Again, hasten to acquire first an unshakable humility of heart. That alone will lead you not to the true knowledge that buffs up, but to that which enlightens by the perfection of love. We pray that in each liturgy, when we eat the body and the blood of Christ, our eyes are going to be opened to see the mysteries and to know him that he is my Lord, my Savior, and my King. May the good of Lord Jesus Christ be with you from now and forever and ever. Amen.